Welcome to Off Grid Rising. We are bracing our foundation so the house stays there for a long time to come. Today, I am underneath the house. So, we obviously are on a post and pier foundation here, and you're probably thinking, gosh, that looks rickety, especially thinking how big our house is. It's 2,000 square feet, 40 by 50 footprint. We have these piers spaced about every 10 feet, which was what the engineer spec'd it to. And um, the concrete itself goes seven and a half, eight feet deep into the ground. So that part is good. Um, it is these four by fours that we need to beef up. You can see that there's temporary bracing underneath them. We are going to make that much more sturdy. And so I'm starting in the corners I've already taken the temporary bracing off of this corner, and that's what I'm going to be working on this morning. Hopefully I get to the back corners as well, which are uh, <laughs> perfect for those who are vertically challenged, like myself. Yesterday, we started on this project, so I'll show you what it will look like uh, when it's finished. So we have 2 by 8 braces at 45 degree angles. And you can see we've gone on both sides of the post. But in addition to that, we actually beefed up these 4x4s. And in essence, we're making them into 6x6s. So we put a 2x6 on the front and braced it all the way up and down. And then we came along the inside and put a 2x4, which makes it, in essence, a 6x6. This brace down here that goes across... Um, may end up being temporary, but right now it is additional shear strength. And shear strength stops your building from going like this, from side to side. So uh, that's on there for now. Eventually we will take the siding all the way down. And when we do that, that'll provide shear strength in and of itself. So we'll uh, be able to remove those if we want to, say, frame in a door or something like that. So we can have access there. We did that on the front side of the house and on the side of the house. And so now we have a really strong corner here that uh, will be stable in the event of an earthquake or just eventual strain on the posts. We did have to adjust this post. So before we put the bracing on, we made sure that everything was uh, plumb. This one was out so much so that we needed to adjust it. So what we did was we came in here, we put a hydraulic jack right next to it, up to the girder. We lifted that girder just slightly so that, uh, well actually before we did that, we loosened these, the post out of the bracket there that you can see right there. So we took the nails out, then we lifted up the girder on the hydraulic jack. And then we tapped the base of the post over so that it is plumb now. Then we put it back in the bracket. Um, obviously we let it down first. Put it back in the bracket and proceeded with our reinforcement of the post itself as well as our uh, triangular bracing. So this is the part where the teacher in me tells you that the strongest shape in nature is a triangle, which is why we are bracing using triangles. So hooray for nature and natural physics and all that jazz. When we reinforced the 4x4s, we put a shim underneath the 2x6 so that it doesn't sit directly on the concrete. You don't want your wood sitting directly on concrete because it's a weakness in terms of rot. All right, I have strengthened my 4x4s and I have put the temporary 2x6 in place. So um, now comes the fun part. So as I mentioned before, triangles are the strongest shape in nature. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to find the midpoint here on this girder so that it ends up looking like this one does over here in this corner. So I'm going to find that midpoint and I'm going to make sure that it is in such a spot that it's not going to screw me up and my boards can meet in the middle there like they did over there. Now, this particular corner is the last one I'm really going to have to worry about that midpoint 
as far as the length of the board screwing me up because the posts get significantly shorter further up the hill. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure from the top of that girder down to the top of this two by six. That distance is the same distance that I'm gonna go across here. And then what I'm gonna do is measure my board long side to long side that's gonna run from the midpoint of this post, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, to the top of the girder. Then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side so that I get a finished product that looks like the one on the other side. Now, the reason that I'm gonna to go to the midpoint here is because eventually we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna repeat this pattern of triangles all the way across the front of the house. So we have a super strong system of support. In order to make sure that I leave myself room to do that, I'm measuring from the midpoint of this post. Over here on the end, I'm gonna measure all the way to the outside of the post because there's no reason for me to leave myself room. All right, I found my center point and it was at 58 and 3 eighths. So I marked that on my girder. Now, I measured from the top of the girder to the top of the two by six, and it was 61 and a quarter, which, as you might know, is more than 58 and 3 eighths. So that means that if I were to um, mark way over here, that would screw me up in terms of my center point. So I have to shorten this triangle up a little bit so that doesn't happen. So I can only go 58 and 3 eighths down, and then I'm gonna measure from that point up to the center, and that should clean me up. All right, so something I'm doing differently over here from yesterday is I'm not cutting that completely off to sit at a 45 degree angle. I just nipped off what I needed to to get it to rest on the two by six. And I'm doing that because I want to have as much meat of this board intact as possible to attach to my post. One side down. One to go, because remember we have to brace both sides of the post. Then I don't like the look of this four by four, so we're gonna jack it up again and re-level this four by four or re-plumb it before we reinforce it and then do our bracing across this way. I'm always grateful when my helper shows up. Manhandling these big pieces of lumber can be a challenge by yourself. Things to consider. So I am gonna take the bracing on the inside up and attach it here to this rim joist. I would like to ideally take it up inside there, but I'm not gonna have enough room to attach it because I can't get a hammer or a nail gun or anything like that up there. So I'm gonna attach it to this board. Now, if we come over here and we look, there is a significant gap between, let me find my finger here, between this post and this rim joist. So by putting my two by six on the front face of this, this is a four by four. So some of that two by six is gonna overhang and which direction it overhangs is gonna dictate where I put my two by four on this face. I am gonna put it on this face because by putting it here, I can bring that closer to the rim joist. So then if I nail my bracing this direction here and this direction into the rim joist, I'm not gonna have as much of a cheat this way. So every single one of these is a little bit different because the spacing on my joists is a little bit different. So eventually I'm gonna have to think about problem solving every single one of these when I go back and put the interior bracing on. Sometimes it's necessary to add a scrap piece of lumber to the other side of your four x four to bring your brace piece into alignment as well. So there were lots of cases where we did that. 
or we added, sometimes we even had to add shims to the joists themselves. Here's Clara cleaning a board so that we can reuse it as reinforcement for the 4x4s. All right, it is day two. I am underneath the house. It's a good thing I'm short. Otherwise, this would be really challenging. Um, and because the back row of the um, piers is so short, we're actually pretending that this is the back row of the house for the purpose of bracing our corners, which is just fine because eventually we need to brace the entire thing. So for right now, we're just making believe and uh, you can see I have a little bit different dimension wood here. It's just what I have. Four by six instead of two by six. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's certainly stronger than two by six, so I'm happy with that. It came from the pile of salvaged lumber that I got for my birthday a couple of years back, so excited about that. That requires a little bit of blocking in between to bring the planes into alignment. You can see there, it doesn't have to be pretty because it's under the house. Some people might flip out about that. I am not one of them. And uh, I'm about to set the last one on this side before moving to this direction here. All right, corner number three is done. So I know this board looks ugly and I can always go back and nip it off later. But uh, I left it long because I don't think it's really gonna matter. It's not gonna get in the way when we race across from there to there. And every one of these is a little bit different and that's okay that they're not all eyeball perfect because ultimately the goal is to get as much meat of the post as possible and as much meat of the board as possible. So you can see over here, this one actually looks kind of like a hat rack because it's so different, um, but that's okay because it's just where I had room to do what I was doing. All right, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the bracing. I definitely have more to do but I'm out of lumber. So I concentrated on the structurally um, crucial elements, like these corners first. And I learned a lot through this process. So just today, which was my last day working on it, I actually replaced the boards on this side of the um, corner, uh, just the ones closest to me there because originally I had made cuts. Whoops, where's my finger? There we go. I had made cuts here because um, I didn't know any better. So now I know better. So I replaced those boards and that gave us a little more meat of the board to hang on to. I'll show you what it looks like from the front. So I've done every other span and we think that we might um, go into these corners and make root cellars or something like that eventually. So that's uh, one reason why this is partially open. I did brace this interior post because it was starting to split. So I beefed it up with the two by six and two by four, and then I braced it to the uh, underside of the house. So that's not going anywhere. And let's see, what else do I want to show you? Um, it's just a matter of doing what you can, when you can, with what you've got. So, you know, it's not regularly done. You can see with this one in the middle here, um, that's very strong. But I focused on the front side of the house because it's way high up off the ground. So I wanted to make sure that it was rigid. Um, but the plus side of a post and pier foundation, especially in earthquake country, which is where I'm at, is that it will buckle a little bit, which is fine as long as it doesn't break. So um, wood is good for that. And then I came off here. This is another corner of the house where we might do a root cellar. I'm actually right underneath the kitchen right now. And we have big dreams of doing some sort of a spiral staircase down into a room here for cold storage eventually. Um, so we'll see what happens. We have a lot of years to play. 
Over here is some more bracing. I'm underneath the house now, obviously. And some of them are right across from each other. Those are closer. Some of them are just not. And that's because I wanted to get as much span and as much uh, grip as I could. So, you know, sometimes that looks different in different places in your foundation. All right, so I'm back outside and uh, this back row is a little bit problematic just because the posts are so short. So on the bright side, the shorter your posts are, the less critical your need for bracing, but of course bracing is still good. So you can see I came along on the inside posts and uh, braced them as much as I could. I still have to do this one, but I don't wanna mess with it right now because I don't have enough lumber to get the job done and I don't wanna take this temporary bracing off until I'm ready. So that is the bracing so far and uh, we'll do more of course as we can afford to and um, as we have the time. We appreciate everyone who watches. Please subscribe, like, and share.